Hi, my name is Tony Said and I'm an assistant professor in chemical engineering at the University of Utah. I have the pleasure of being here with you today and I want to talk about some of the recent exciting work we did um, for the Utah Symphony here in Salt Lake City. I want to thank the Salt Lake County, the University of Utah, the Center for High Performance Computing for all their support and funding uh, to get this work done. I want to thank my entire team over here with my co-PI, Professor James Sutherland, uh, my two PhD students and a postdoc who made all of this work possible. The primary question um, that everyone had on their mind during the COVID-19 pandemic and potentially now any pandemic uh, coming up in the future is, is it safe? Is the activity that we're trying to pursue um, gonna, out, gonna enable us to stay safe or are we gonna be at risk of catching the virus? That's the primary question. Um, grocery shopping, you're going um, riding in a car with some friends or taking a cab, um, birthday party, um, specifically playing in an orchestra. No one had that on their mind, but um, if you think about it, um, the performing arts um, could actually be a good thing during times of stress. And so it would be of primary interest to get those back in business um, so that people can enjoy, um, have some relaxed time during stressful times. And this is the exact question we tried to answer in this study when the Utah Symphony reached out to the university and our department um, seeking collaborators to try to understand uh, what is happening on their stage, um, uh, specifically at Ravenel Hall and Capitol um, Theater uh, here in Salt Lake City. Um, the, us being engineers, we look at things differently, um, a little bit differently than um, exposure um, science or epidemiologists. Uh, we are more interested in the fluid dynamics of things. And if you think about it, um, as far as we understand, the primary mechanism of transmission is for a virus to tack on to a respiratory droplet and once someone exhales that droplet via sneezing, coughing, or just breathing, or in the case of the orchestra, playing an instrument. And those wind instruments, for example, um, are specifically dangerous because there's a significant accumulation of respiratory droplets um, that goes on. And while string instruments can be masked, uh, you cannot mask wind instruments can be attempted but it will significantly affect the acoustics so um, being engineers we look at this from a fluid mechanics perspective and the idea is if we can track the aerosols um, or the respiratory droplets and understand the airflow motion in any given venue then we can potentially look at the fate of those aerosols and therefore um, by um, direct deduction the fate of the virus and potentially the risk of infection. So we are not infectious disease experts, however we can help in identifying where potentially infected aerosols are going to end up. And for that we use our bread and butter which is a tool called computational fluid dynamics which um, uh, we, this is our expertise uh, here in the group and in the, in, the, in the department. And so the idea would be if we tra track the airflow we um, uh, would know where the aerosols go. Um, our approach has been um, based on these three um, categories. First, we simulate um, the airflow given a certain um, seating arrangement for the orchestra, given a, a certain air conditioning setup, given a certain geometry, and then we look at um, what we call the breathing zone. Um, so if you're sitting in a large hallway, for example, I really don't care what's happening way up above me, 20 feet above me. What I care about is what's happening in the breathing zone, and we define that um, for someone seated as the, um, as, the, as the region from 90 centimeters to 130 centimeters. So for a seated player that would go from just about their um, chest like shown over here, or to slightly above um, their head. And if we look, if we focus on that region to look at time and spatial averages, that um, um, uh, is going to give us a good indication of what is going on um, um, in the breathing zone of the individual. Um, so once we analyze the breathing zone, we look at the airflow and the airflow dynamics and how the aerosols are moving, then we develop a mitigation strategy and then go back to the drawing board if we have to. Okay. 
Um, so at first we looked at the original stage and the original seating arrangement. Um, but first I'm going to talk to you just about the basic airflow in that um, in that stage. It's called a Bravino Hall. And what I'm showing here are um, detailed, um, uh, high fidelity, high resolution simulations. Um, we can talk a little bit about the details of the CFD model. This is all in-house codes developed um, uh, by the team. We use the latest in um, simulation technology to capture turbulence and model the airflow and um, gain high order of accuracy calculations with high performance computing. Um, what you're showing, what we're showing here, are instantaneous. Um, simulations of the airflow. This is on a log scale. Blue is very low, red is high, so and the scale here is from about um, 0 0.1 meter to 2.5 meters per second. Um, and you can see here this is the stage and this is um, looking into the stage. These little pillars here are the instrumentalists and you see the flow coming up from the top and impinging at the bottom and causing some recirculation zones. There are some vents way in the back over here. Um, we'll discuss those later, so those are going to be important to um, take out all the potentially infected aerosols. Um, and looking at the time averages below, um, you can identify a couple of recirculation regions, and those are bad because um, what happens there is these regions are going to potentially accumulate more and more aerosols and therefore potentially more and more virus. Okay. Um, next, we looked at the aerosol emissions from um, wind instruments. I'm going to step um, out of the way here a little bit. And we identify um, two categories of instruments. We um, just arbitrarily called them um, super spreaders and super emitters. A super emitter is an instrument that emits a large number of aerosols. And a super spreader is an instrument that emits um, aerosols at high speed, so a jet, for example, okay? And we look, we distinguish those by this, these two scales here. There's a color scale where blue is, um, a, uh, is a, a low emission, um, uh, low speed, sorry, um, low speed for the emission, and red is high jet speed. So the redder the instrument is, um, the more of a super spreader the instrument is. And then we look at size, and the size identifies um, how many uh, particles are being emitted, like I'm showing on, on this graph. So, if you look at the trumpet, for example, it's particularly scary because it is both a super emitter, red, and it's both, a, a, sorry, it's, it's a super spreader, red, and a super emitter, um, it's got a la relatively large um, size. Um, but then you look, for example, at the bassoon, um, it is red, so it means it's a super spreader, but it's relatively small, so it's not a super emitter. Then you look, for example, at the French horn. Um, it emits at very low speeds, but it's also not, not emitting a large number of particles. So um, this we, we have to keep this um, 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 in, in consideration because we want to place the super emitters and the super spreaders as close to vents as possible as possible. So, you know, purple and red and large discs, we want to move those around. And also, um, if you look at the bassoon and specifically the flute, here's another one, it's not emitting a large number of um, particles, but it's shooting them at very high speed. Okay. Um, so that's, that's, that's really important to keep in mind. So once we look at this, we it assumed all wind instruments are emitting aerosols at the same time continuously because this is a worst case scenario. And what you're looking at here are um, um, contour surfaces um, colored um, from 0 0.1 uh, in yellow, 1 to 10, 1 in orange, and 10 in, um, in red. Uh, particles per liter. So these are particle concentrations um, coming out from these instrumentalists and as the aerosols um, are emitted they move with the airflow okay and they move with the airflow. What we what we found out was that there's significant accumulation here. Now clearly in practice not all the wind instruments are going to be playing together but it's good given the, all the uncertainty we have in the model it's good to look at a worst case scenario. Um, now looking at the breathing zone, which we defined um, from 90 centimeters to 130 centimeters, if we take a time and spatial average and we plot it over here, then we can see that this is really bad, what's going on on the stage. It's really bad. You can see that emissions from um, the woodwind instruments are spread across all the way. They're flooded into the strings out front. And particularly dangerous over here are the trumpets, which are flooding the percussions um, here in the back. 
So what now? What are we going to do next? And we thought of what we call the um, uh, car smoker analogy. So suppose for a moment that you are um, in a car with someone, you're transporting someone in your car who has to smoke. They're smoking. Yeah, you know, I, uh, I grew up in a country where everyone smokes and, you know, it was common for someone to be smoking in the car. So uh, what would you do in that case to minimize your exposure um, to the smoke? Um, you would probably open up the windows, blast the AC and keep the car moving to bring in fresh air into the car and you'd potentially ask the smoker to sit way back and close to a vent. Um, so this leads to these two mitigation strategy ideas. The first one, opening the windows and moving the car, is, is equivalent in a venue to manipulating the um, ventilation system. So for example, over-pressurizing the room um, and changing the, manipulating the return so that um, uh, the air moves in different directions. Um, try to open up windows and doors if available. And uh, rearrange the seating um, of the individuals and specifically for the orchestra. So this is going to get really interesting. Okay, so we tried the first idea, and it turns out that there are um, two doors um, on the stage at Abravno Hall, uh, over here. So we opened them, and we played around with the ventilation system, um, so that about 20% of the air was moving through these two doors, and 80% was moving through the vents um, on the back. And we observed that the extent of the effect of the doors was local, and you can see this um, by the streamlines um, down here, these streamlines that are shown in purple. Um, these show the extent of um, the effect of the doors and it wasn't felt um, all the way into um, the domain so uh, you know it did provide us the opening the doors did provide us with in a few additional um, um, exhaust vents if you want with the window analogy but it was not sufficient in and of itself what we needed to do is to look at the second mit mitigation strategy, which is rearranging the orchestra. So at first, this was unheard of. Like, well, you know, these orchestral arrangements, you could imagine they've been in the works for centuries and for um, um, a bunch of engineers to come and say, hey, you know, we're gonna change the seating arrangement to reduce your emissions um, and the infection risk. Um, uh, that's kind of unheard of, but um, we went ahead and talked to the orchestra and said, would you be interested in us looking at that? And they said, Absolutely, um, whatever uh, we could do to keep our players safe, we want to do that. And so we went ahead and moved um, instruments around. So remember, um, some of the instruments were um, uh, super spreaders, some of them were both super spreaders and super emitters. So we wanted to make sure, we, we looked at a few different um, arrangements. We tried to keep instrument clusters close to each other, as close as possible, but we ended up um, by taking this original seating arrangement, you see here the percussions in the back, and the piano up here, and we moved the percussions and these um, um, instruments to the center and rearranged all the woodwinds all along the back where the vents are. And remember, we had the two doors over here, one over here and one over here. So we put the bassoons over here, we put the flutes over there. Look what we did with the trumpets. We put them way back. Those were um, the worst case scenario. So the only... Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, the only cluster of instruments that wasn't kept together were the trumpets where we put one here and one over there. And this is what happened when we did this. I'll step out of the frame. We were absolutely excited when we saw this that um, opening the doors, rearranging the orchestra led to a significant, and, and this is still qualitative over here, but quantitatively this led to a significant decrease in concentrations at about a factor of 100. Um, this was all discussed in the paper that I cited at the beginning of, the, um, uh, of this presentation. And um, when you, we looked at the um, time and spatial average in the breathing zone, we went from this scenario to that scenario, where the blue again is um, particle concentrations of less than 0.1 particles per liter or one particle every 10 liters. Um, <clears throat> and mostly, this is mostly blue. It means very little particles um, floating around. Did we eliminate um, aerosols? No, it's practically impossible to do that. But we've reduced the um, accumulation, the concentration of particles significantly. Um, <clears throat> 
We later were encouraged to apply a dose response model to these concentrations. Again, we're not experts in infectious disease, but we consulted with some colleagues and um, some of the reviewers on our paper. And we ended up taking uh, just a standard um, um, dose response model. And we realized that, um, you know, in the regime that we are um, in, where we have um, concentrations of, you know, less than about a hundred particles per um, per liter, and how much we reduce them, we are still in the linear regime. So what that means is that um, a reduction in um, uh, a reduction in concentration is going to immediately translate to a similar reduction in infection risk. There's more detail on how we did the calculation for the infection risk risk um, in the paper, um, but. The concentration reduction immediately translated to a um, reduction in infection risk. If you do the calculation, there's about a, a two orders of magnitude reduction in infection risk, which is um, pretty substantial, um, in my opinion. So, in conclusion, you know our models uh, um, have limitations. Absolutely, we given the time frame that we had, just about six weeks to get all of this work done, um, ramping up the model, doing any additional coding that was needed to be done. We assumed that. All the particles were aerosol. We didn't look at um, particle deposition. We were not worried about that because um, surface contamination can be dealt with by sanitization and cleaning. Um, we did not take into account evaporation, no effects from temperature or relative humidity. And that's a fair assumption because the um, orchestra um, and the, the concert hall is maintained at a fairly um, constant temperature and, um, and humidity. So there was not significant change in humidity in the hall. Um, the viral inactivity was not considered. Instruments were emitting con continuously, no taking breaks. So again, worst case scenario. Um, and, uh, you know, in conclusion, uh, in my opinion, any analysis of a venue that does not involve the an airflow simulation and airflow understanding is incomplete. In the end, it is the it is the, the primary mechanism of transmission of airborne disease is through the by definition is through the airflow. If we cannot understand the airflow, it is we're not telling the entire story. So um, what this taught us is that um, um, CFD and computational fluid dynamics and science fluid mechanics is a critical component um, of risk mitigation, developing risk mitigation strategies for public health um, uh, issues, public health um, analyses, especially with um, airborne disease. Um, uh, the principles that we deduced, while not generally applicable um, to all orchestras and venues, um, the rules of thumb are that move high emitters as close to vents as possible, one, and two, create as many return vents as you can. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed the talk, um, and I'm happy to um, answer more questions um, um, during this session. Thank you so much.